Well hey everybody, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger from dansfish.com and today we're talking about some hillstream loaches, so let's take a look. So these little guys are amazing. Um, I heard a great description of them the other day that they are miniature stingrays, and that's kind of what they look like. They're very, you know, like a, a ray, flat little body, kind of plate-like shape. What they really are, though, is nature's suction cups. Um, that's how I like to describe them. Basically, the whole bottom surface of these fish is meant to suction tightly onto rocks and things like that because the habitat these guys live in the water flows so quickly that it'll wash all the other fish away the only way to like stay in place in this habitat with this torrential water flow at times anyway is to um, you know suction cup yourself down to a rock so that's what they do they've they've developed a way to do that so they can kind of adhere really tightly to these surfaces and they they swim around a little bit but they also kind of scoot along so they they, they do the uh, I don't know the hill stream loach scoot <laughs> which is an interesting way to swim now there are hill stream loaches that are commonly available in the hobby it's uh, they're called usually butterfly hill stream loaches or tiger hill stream loaches or ornate hill stream loaches they're Sewilia lineolata is the species that's usually available these are different and I'm not sure exactly what the species is I think the genus is gastromyzon that's I believe what these guys are there's also something similar called pseudogastromyzon but I don't think that's what they are they they're probably gastromyzon um, stellatus or tenocephalus or something very similar to that they do have the blue rays in the uh, tail fin, the caudal fin, and so they're, they're that or something similar to it. Now these fish don't get really big, they max out at oh, probably two to three inches roughly, and so they're great for a small aquarium that, or a large aquarium, but they can go okay in a small aquarium, as long as their tank mates are just peaceful fish. Um, I have them in here with some limias, they're in with some ember tetras, there's a few Siamese algae eaters, and there's also some uh, beta rubra in this tank. Now, they come from those really, really high flowing streams, which is why they're called hill stream loaches, but they don't have to have that in captivity. Now, they can, by all means, you could set up a hill stream aquarium where you have massive power <laughs> heads on one side pushing water to an intake on the other side and it's just directional fast flow going all one direction and that's actually really cool when people do that but what they really need is high oxygen content in the water so they need a lot of dissolved oxygen as long as that kind of uh, need is meant meant met then they'll be fine whether the flows super high or not now they don't like really hot temperatures either if you keep them a little cooler that's better probably oh you can kind of see the blue on that guy's tail the guy that was on the rock it reflected for a few seconds there until he changed directions and then the light didn't ref reflect properly but um yeah so is the cooler water absorbs more oxygen and so that's a little better for them and coming from that really high flow there's a lot of evaporation in their uh, natural habitat so even if it's kind of tropical or semi-tropical some of them come from downright temperate areas it seems but even if they're kind of semi-tropical all that evaporation makes the water cooler than uh, you know it would be in a stagnant pond or something like that so I mid 70s is fine upper 70s is fine high 60s is fine I've had these guys outside at 65 degrees maybe lower maybe even down to like 60 degrees and they did great so that was when I, I lived somewhere and could keep uh, aquariums on my patio they were out there year-round and did just fine so you know they don't need really high temperatures or anything like that if you have an unheated aquarium in a room where you're comfortable they'll be comfortable too most likely so that's, a, that's temperature and water flow and oxygen saturation is, is the main thing. With that, no ammonia, no nitrite. And I don't think they're going to do well with high nitrate either. This, the water they live in is so pristine and so fast flowing and oxygen rich and stuff like that. Think of like a pristine trout stream that 
is flowing really quickly. Something like that um, is, is what they're going to be used to. So toxins and things like that, ammonia, nitrite, they don't, they don't do well with that. Although they are pretty darn hardy, but don't expose them to that long term. Food, these guys are raspers, so what grows on these, you know, rocks and stuff in these really fast-flowing streams is called offswatch, and it's, um, I think I said that right, it's basically a thin coat of, like, biofilm and algae and little invertebrates and critters and stuff that grow in that, but they're all kind of clingy things. There aren't, there's not, like, free-floating food and stuff like that they can grab, so they like to rasp things, so they go around on surfaces and just kind of scrub stuff off with their mouth. So you can feed them flakes and pellets and rapashi and baby brine shrimp they really like. Um, it's just got to be stuff that sinks to the bottom and kind of stays there. A trick I really like is to take a tile or a kind of flat stone or something, the back side of the tile that's kind of rough, dip it in some rapashi like a community blend rapashi food and coat the stone or the tile or the plate or whatever with that and you get this thin layer of it across there and then you can put this down there and these guys will just scoot over it and kind of munch it off so that's a nice way to feed them occasionally too but they're not hard to feed as long as the food falls to the bottom and stays there they'll, they'll go and they'll eat it now the issue is they're not really fast at the food they're not quick to the food and so they can be outcompeted really easily. So if you have a whole bunch of other fish in the tank, they just swarm the food and eat it in a couple seconds, and it doesn't get on the bottom and settle there for a while, these guys will eventually starve out. Something else you can do to supplement their diet is take some stones or something like that, put them in just a really high light aquarium or outside in a uh, container of water that gets a lot of sun, wait till it's just coated with like green stuff then put that in the aquarium and these guys will love that. They'll swim on that and just graze on that all day long. So a little bit of specialized care, but nothing difficult. They're very peaceful fish. They don't, I mean, they do display to each other, you know, they get some territorial stuff like any other fish and I'm boss and, you know, I'm higher on the pecking order than you and stuff like that. But I've never seen any damage to each other. It's, it's more display and like kind of pushing each other around as opposed to biting and things, although I suppose that could happen occasionally. And they don't bother other fish or anything like that either. So ideal in a community aquarium, these with any kind of small peaceful fish are going to do great as long as those fish aren't out competing them for food. That's really the limiting factor. If there is a problem with aggression, what it is going to be is the other fish picking on these guys. I doubt it would ever be these fish picking on them. So, you know, they want to be on the bottom so or, or on the side of the aquarium and stuff like that too, but they cling to stuff. And so anything that is in a different niche, a different part of the aquarium would be a great tank mate. Anything that's mid-water or top would be wonderful. Surface-dwelling fish like little platinum half beaks or some of the killifish that stay at the surface, uh, hatchet fish, th even archer fish. Well, archer fish, I don't know. They might like it a little warmer. But, um, but anything that stays more or less at the surface would be great for these guys because like the half beaks, once the food falls down, you know, past the midwater zone, they're probably not going to go down and eat the rest of it. So if you feed them, they eat off the top and then the other food goes to the bottom and these guys have time to get to it. So you kind of have to plan your tank mates and things, but bottom line is they're peaceful. They're a ton of fun to watch clowning around and they're just such a unique fish. Again, little rays, little stingrays or nature's suction cup. Anyway, I think they're fantastic. I've kept them for, oh, decades on and off, about 15, 20 years I've had them and I love them still. Well, I hope you like those little guys, little stingrays, I think they're awesome. And uh, yeah, if you have a question about them or a comment about them, leave it below. We can geek out together, it'll be fun. If you like this, uh, I've got a lot of other videos. Uh, also, if you wouldn't mind considering, liking, subscribing, sharing. Um, and there's something else. That, oh, the notification bell! You know, all those things that we're always begging you to do. Any of that would be most appreciated. Until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.